lot of people don't think it's a dirty word. It's not a dirty word. People think, say, what do you think about multi-level businesses? Hey, I, I like a lot of them. I, I've got some dear friends that have been involved in that for many, many years. I think they've, they've, they've done a lot of wonderful things. I've got friends in there right now that are doing great things. Because I do believe that networking is actually a biblical concept. And I want to walk this through with you. The Bible says in Matthew 16, verse 24, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to become my follower, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And what does it benefit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, my dad used to quote this scripture a lot, and he wasn't a, a, a church-attending man. Uh, he did accept Christ before he died, but he, he learned that scripture, I think, uh, in uh, boarding school when he was a kid. What is the profit of man that gained the whole world but loses his soul? My dad became the president of a large corporation in Belgium, Luxembourg, and Holl Holland, uh, but he was losing his soul, um, and he almost lost his family. Uh, he became a workaholic and that he wasn't there for us kids and and of course we didn't know how to be there for our dad so there was a real generation gap and and we had a lot of pain because of it he almost lost his soul and and, and i believe that if you have the right people in your network and if you know how to feed that network, including your own family. So when you do research, if you want to Google it this week, I want to encourage you to Google networking. And then I want you to look on YouTube. There's all kinds of videos and all kinds of coaching. I'm going to come at it in a different perspective uh, because I'm a Christian. I'm going to come at it as a Christian. I look at networking as a Christian. I look at networking that Jesus did, and I'm going to learn from him so I can transfer to you. Now, I'm going to be training you for four weeks on networking. Why? Because if you're a Jewish person, there's no division between ministry and marketplace, between career and God. It's all mushed together. And why do you think the Jewish people prosper wherever they go? I was at the restaurant two days ago and I saw my Jewish friend who manages a very, very successful restaurant. And I always like to go up to him and go, Shalom. <laughs> you know, I don't know a lot of Hebrew, but I know Shalom and I know Shabbat. And he goes, Shalom, Shalom. So he gave me a double blessing. Because if you live in Shalom, what does it mean? Peace and prosperity. Emotional, financial, relational. When they proclaim it out of their mouth, like Denise is going to preach on tonight, you say something out of the mouth, there's something that happens in the supernatural realm. That can be transferred to the marketplace. We just spent 40 minutes out there in the lobby passing out cards, and I was receiving a lot of cards, and one by one, would you pray for my business? Would you? Because business is not a dirty word. And your career is not a dirty word. If you heard that somewhere else, it's not even in the Bible. And unfortunately, Christians have not done a great job of integrating. I was trained by Dr. Dobbins in Ohio, and he was the best at integrating. He was a PhD psychologist, he, and he looked at psychology, and he integrated it. Most people, I remember back when I was in graduate school, Jimmy Swagger was saying that counseling was of the devil. And he said all kinds of wonderful things like that. And I'm in a counseling program. And I had people tell me, don't go for counseling training that's not from God. And I'm thinking, why are we so afraid of counseling? If we're supposed to take care of our soul, shouldn't the word soul in the Greek, suke, where we get our word psychology from? So what I believe is in integration, not a separation of church and state. In fact, what are we seeing right now with our state, our city, and our nation? They're coming to ICLV, teach us how to go into prisons. Teach us how to do prisoner reentry. Teach us how to do immigration. Teach us how to do this. Robin was just in the White House working with other people to, to shut down sex trade in our nation. Give Robin a big hand, please. Why? Because ICLV is not separating ministry from marketplace or ministry from justice issues. We've melded the two together. Why? Because it's a biblical concept. So let, let's, I want to flesh this out a little bit more because I'm spending four weeks on the subject. So it's all going to be Bible based, but it's going to, number one, show you that your marketplace, like Jerry said, can be your ministry. So go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 4, 1 Corinthians 4, and we're going to go to verse uh, 16. 
because this is such a great scripture. Paul, the disciple, uh, is not talking about following. He's talking about imitating. So number one, the greatest connection that you can make in networking is right here. I'm networking with God. What do we do when we can't get Wi-Fi? I don't have a network, right? We go to a restaurant. I was at a restaurant yesterday. I said, what's your password? Because I want to be part of your network. And so when I'm a Christian, what am I saying? I want to be in this network right here. The sad thing is, a lot of us are Christian, but we don't have a network with God. We don't spend time in our Bible every day. We don't pray every day. We, we, we don't get into Bible studies like University of Life. Or we're not doing anything to improve our network with God. See, the first network, Jesus said, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. You find the word follow 35 times in the, in the Bible. About 30 of them are all from the New Testament, mostly from Jesus. Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I'll do this. Follow me, follow me, follow me. What does Jesus want? He wants you to have a clear network this way. I was on the driving here with Greg, and we wanted to watch the beginning of service. I was a little bit late. And uh, he, he, he said, your network is weak, and we couldn't get proper reception to see the service online at the moment. Then we got it like three minutes later. But see, when your network is weak, you can't hear from God anymore. See, what happens is, if your network is weak with God, you have to look for other people that have a better network. So Karen, what we do is, we look for superstars of faith. Well, I'm going to have Pastor Paul, you know, pray, or I'm going to have Denise pray, and, or I'm going to have so-and-so pray, or Pasquale pray, he goes to the White House. And what we learn is, we learn that other people have a network, and we don't. I was in a, ta a taxi in Paris last year, and the gentleman says, I have a network. And I go, what? He goes, yeah, I have Wi-Fi in my car. <laughs> I thought, I love this taxi. Until I saw the price tag at the end of it. <laughs> Going to the airport was like 50 euros. It was terrible. But I had a network. A lot of times as Christians, we fail to recognize that we need to develop our own networks and we need to make sure they're strong. Why? So that we can do this. We can hear from God. We can know the perfect will of God. Amen? Amen. Now, so Paul goes, so he, he takes the next step in this, in this uh, networking concept, and it's verse um, 16 of, of 1 Corinthians 4. I encourage you then to be imitators of me. Tony, you teach at the University of Las Vegas. You're, you're head of the orchestra. You create, you write orchestra, you write symphonies and things like that. You have students, don't you? And you have students that pay money to be trained by this man right here. They're imitators of you. They're, they're going to sound like you in many ways. Because they're going to imitate what they've learned. Dr. Lim, I, I'm, I'm an imitator of Dr. Lim. At 39 years, he's been my mentor. And, and so I imitate things I've learned from Dr. Lim. I have a network. I've been studying with John Maxwell for 15, no, 20 years. 23 years. And I've been learning from Dr. Maxwell. He, I imitate John. The other day, uh, someone from the district office um, that oversees hundreds books and all his writings, even his own personal writings, I inherited the whole thing. And it's it really an honor. We have it in storage. We're, I'm starting to go through it now. And so he goes, Paul, I found Dobbin's stuff. I said, good, what is it? He says, it's a, a reentry program for people that have fallen, in, you know, whether it's sexually or financially or morally in some way. A minister or a business person has fallen, so we have uh, we have a Dobbins program to reintegrate them uh, after they get some help. I said that's wonderful. They, they said, "Isn't it great?" I see. He says, "I see Dobbins written all over it," and I said, "Can I tell you the truth?" He goes, "Yeah." I said, "I wrote it," but he didn't know that I'd written the reentry program. He thought it was Dobbins. Why? Because I'm an imit imitator, of Dr. Dobbins. I learned from my mentor. And I'm proud to say, the word imitation is interesting. It's not the word follow. Jesus said follow, which means that we're supposed to serve him. And literally, the connotation is, I'm serving and I'm learning from you. It's people think, I'm a follower of Jesus. You're not a follower till you serve him. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make enemies here. It's in the Bible. If you look at the root word, it means a follower of Jesus not only learns from him, but serves him. 
So that's why this week when we, we fed thousands and thousands of people, I've got people from this campus going to the Dream Center and serving, feeding. Wonderful volunteer base. I had volunteers at the, the conference. A wonderful volunteer base. I mean, ICLB would not function without volunteers. Why? Because they're followers of Jesus. Followers of Jesus serve God and they serve others. Amen. Are you all with me? Is this ICLV? You're not offended by what I'm saying, are you? All right, so, so when you read this scripture, it's so powerful. He says, be like, and the word is mime. The, the root word of the word imitate is actually be a mime. If I want to be a great architect, I'll go find a great architect and I'll learn from them. I'll pay, I'll go to graduate school. If I want to be a great doctor, I'll find a great doctor. I want to learn from that doctor. And that's why even in psychology, you have schools of thought. You have Gestalt, you have Rogerian, you have EMDR, you have uh, Rogers, you have uh, uh, Freud. You, I can tell you the schools of thought are people that imitate the teacher. And Paul's not afraid of saying this. Just imitate me. I remember when I was in Bible college and Dr. Lim was there. And I go, man, I want to be just like him. But Dr. Lim and I don't look alike at all. He's Asian and I'm not. He speaks Chinese and I don't. But I wanted to be like him. I want to pray like him. I wanted to love Jesus like him. And, you know, he's 73 now. And, you know, he's the guy that still goes into East Asia and does things that no person should really be doing at his age or really in any other age. I want. It's creating a network where we're always learning. We're always learning. And we have our Pauls, but we have our Jesus. Does it make sense to everybody? Y'all still with me? Now, let's break this down a little bit more. When you look at the concept of networking, you find, when you do research on Google or anywhere else, you're going to find two primary types of, of networking. One is personal networking. And personal networking is family, friends, uh, uh, cohorts of some sort uh, in life. Uh, and, and of course, the other one is marketplace or workplace or career-based network. Now, that's what we're doing in the lobby today. Not only are we giving a chance to build a network of workplace people in that I, I met someone, she needed, uh, she's, she has her own restaurant, but they have some problems in renovating the building, and, and people are cheats sometimes, and I said, well, walk around here, pass out your card, you're going to find, we have general contractors in our church that are super honest, and subcontractors, I said, walk around, pass out your card, you'll find the person to help you with your problem. So, what's that? That's networking in the marketplace. But then we have networks personal here, that we have people in our our, our cell ministry, our University of Life, our growth groups, that, man, they, they form lifelong friendships. I can always tell if someone's involved in our small networks, our gr small groups. We have Bible studies here in small groups. We have cell ministry in homes, and we have cell ministry here. I can always tell when someone's not involved in a network. You want to know why? Because there's no net to help them. There's no net that works for them because they didn't build that net. They didn't spend time making sure that the net was built for them and for other people. So what happens is in our, in our church, we get a phone call at the office. Hey, can you send someone to pray for Jimmy? Sure, we can send. Pasqual, will you go? Normal, will you go? And one of my other team members, go and pray for Jimmy or Susie or Mary. Because they'll tell me there's no one else coming. All right, we'll send somebody. But then the people that are involved in our small groups, our nets, guess what? They never call us. <laughs> Because they have too many people visiting them in a the hospital. I'm not kidding. The major complaint we get, Emily, from hospitals, you know what we get? There's too many people from ICLV. But you know who visits them? The ones in the net. They were there for them, and now they're there for them. They're there to drive them. They're there to make them meals. But for people that aren't involved in building their own net, guess what happens? The church provides a net for them. So what we need to do as individuals, we need to work the nets. Am I building a personal net here first, then here? Am I investing in mama and daddy and sister and auntie and uncle and Jimmy? Now, in France, I learned this concept. I started going, I did all, I started all the training in France and from scratch. Dr. Maxwell said, Paul, would you do me a favor? Would you train people in French? I said, sure. Not knowing that it would cost me a lot of money and a lot of time, a lot of energy. And I actually did it for over 10 years. And now we're in 24 cities. It's going, it's still in 24 cities, Jerry. It's going amazing. But I, I didn't know that, that the French would teach me a lot too. 
So one day they go, we had a committee meeting with the French, and they go, we're mad at you! Charbel, I said, what did I do? I I paid for my own flights, my own meals, my own hotels. I'm giving you the material, but you're mad at me. They go, yes, we're mad at you because you're not eating dinner with us after the session. As you know, Europeans eat differently than Americans. Because when you're America, it's in and out burger. Even the slow restaurants are you're out within an hour. But in Europe, it's like three or four hours for dinner. And everything's a big deal. Everything, let us take out the hors d'oeuvres. And they, oh, wow, c'est très bien, oh, it's wonderful. Everything's a production. And I have attention deficit disorder. I'm done after 30 minutes. I'm done. And then I'm getting frustrated because the waiters are so, Edmundo, so slow. They are so slow. This is not American. This, no, no, we do this on purpose. You mean they're going slow on purpose? I'm thinking, did they go kill the cow or something? Is there something I don't know about out there? <laughs> they said, this is an experience. And we're building relationships. So I, I had to really change. Literally, I had to go from sixth gear because I'm a pretty fast person. And I literally had to go, when I'm in Europe, I need to go down to first gear and sometimes in neutral and just go, ha, ah, this is so wonderful. I think I'm going crazy right now. <laughs> but you know what? When I got sick and almost died, you know who called me? This man right here, Greg, called me. And he would call me. He says, I, he sold his car to come and visit us. This man here became my closest, him and Pasquale. Pasquale would literally just come to my house, knock on my door. I'd be on my couch crying, dying, and he would just come and pray for me. And what would happen if I'd not listened to them? If I said, oh, you're just a bunch of Europeans and you don't know, I got stuff to do and people to meet and places to go. But instead I go, all right, I'm going to learn the process of Selah, having a meal with friends and just laughing and really enjoying the meal and I learned that from the French and isn't it weird that by learning something from them it became a net when I needed a net because I was falling I was sick and he was there for me and she's been there for my wife see I've never heard anyone talk about networking in a church before and I know I took a little bit of a risk Naomi and you and your husband I, I know We've been, we're friends, right? I think, first of all, we're friends, Mikaya and Naomi from France. But I asked them the other day, I said, I want to start a soccer program for Madagascar. They have no programs for the kids. They're all in the streets. Lauren, you know this. I've told you the story. They're all in the streets, 170,000 in sex trade. But I have a net right here. They're my friends. And I said, would you be the businessman that helps coordinate all the... I've already got favor with the mayor. I'm trying to get a corporate sponsor right now to, to fund the first league ever for little children in the day. Get them off the streets. They can't afford school. So the kids are not in school. They're either sex treat or gangs or whatever else. The streets are littered with little kids without shoes. I said, I want to provide shoes and shin pads and uniforms. I want to train them in soccer. I want to do all those things. I said, Mikael, you're, you're from there. You're a businessman. He goes, oh, I'd love to do that. And then my, my son-in-law, Levi, who I'm really, really close to, I said, Levi, you played Division I soccer. Would you go and train? Absolutely, Papa G. And then my, my 12-year-old, my 10-year-old said, who's now, his face is on the side of a bus. He's so good at nine years old. He goes, Papa, can I go train soccer players too? At nine years old. What am I talking about? Network. See, a lot of times in, in, in relationships, it's we go in there and we want, man, if I just get a job, if I just sell this car, if I just, if I just do this, if I just have a bigger salary, if I just had a bigger title. You got it all wrong. Go with me to Romans 11. 111, please. You guys still with me? Are you learning anything? I'm going to do this for, 12, uh, for four weeks, gang. Uh, literally, and that's why we're bringing, we're asked, I asked Dr. Anderson to bring his team here because we need to transform the marketplace and marketplace is a not, not a dirty word. You becoming wealthy and prosperous and being blessed in your family is not a dirty word. I want to see, I want to see a hundredfold growth in your life. Okay. That's not a, that's not a big response. I thought I'd get a much bigger response. I want to see a hundredfold. Hey. 
we'll keep getting the same thing while we keep doing the same thing. Why are we asking these people in? I need a network because I don't know how to do what they do. They are bringing it here. They're part of my new network. I need your help. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say I need your help. Romans 1, 11 and 12. There are people that don't want to get input. There are people that, that don't, aren't, aren't asking for help. They're, they're, and there's people that aren't willing to help others. So look at this. This is one of my favorite verses. Romans 1, 11. For I long to see you, Paul talking to the Romans, so that I might impart use once in the whole Bible. It means I got plenty of something and I'm going to give you some of it. Literally, that's what it means. I want to impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. So I want you to write this down. Number one, everybody say number one. Networking is all about what you pour into others, not what they can pour into you. If you go into the room going, I hope somebody will like me. I hope somebody will like my dress. I hope somebody will notice I lost weight. I, or I hope someone noticed that I, didn't, that I gained weight. If you go in looking for something from them, that's not networking. Uh-uh. There's givers and takers in this world. That's a taker. You might do it because you're insecure, not you, but other people. But insecurity causes us to do what? Be takers. Be takers instead of givers. So Romans 11 says, I can't wait to see you. Because I want to transfer stuff. I got a lot of this stuff. And you know what the stuff he has? It's called spiritual gifts. And the Greek word there is pneumatikos charis. Pneumatikos means God breathed. Paul says, God breathed a lot of this stuff. The word gift is like gifts or favor. It's the word charis or grace. In other words, he says, I got so much grace and gifts and favor in my pocket. I want to transfer it to you. How many would like Bill Gates to become your personal mentor and coach? Give me, a, give me a wave. How many would like Bill Gates to become your personal financial sponsor? In Jesus' name, sha, sha da, ba, ba. <laughs> What's that? That, that? That's hoping that someone's going to be our ticket, right? Well, why don't we become the ticket with God? Why don't we get so full every day that all we want to do is impart into others? Favor, gifts. There's a church in Turlock. I've, got, I've done their Holy Spirit conference 19 years, and I just did it again. And uh, they're amazing. They're, they're planting churches around the world, and each time they plant one, Jerry, they go, Paul, we planted another church for you. I go, it's not, it's not for me. It's, you guys are doing it. No, no, it's your church. And I go, I don't want my name on it. It's, it's your church. And, and it's so exciting because they see themselves as spiritual kids and, and, and my spiritual son and daughter. And they're just really cool. What a great relationship. But then she got some little bit of favor from somebody else, a pastor in Chicago, and she went ballistic. She's all around the world now, written famous books, and, and the gal is on fire. See, I wasn't just one part of her network, nor was Denise. We are one cog of it. There was another one that is here, another one was here, because networks are never just one person. It can't just be one Bill Gates or one Jimmy or Susie or Mary. We have around you a whole network that we're supposed to first bring something to them. Bring something to them. That's my first rule of law in my brain. I've got to add value to that person. And then it says this in verse 12. That is, that we might be mutually edified, equipped, comforted by your faith, both yours and mine. Here's the cool thing, gang. If I go into every relationship, every new network, and I'm adding value, people are going to want you in their network. They're just going to want you in their network. And then, but you've got to make sure it's not just a take relationship. You go in there wanting to give and so, but what's the comeback? What's the comeback? Now, I went to Dr. Anderson's training and man, I received a truckload and a U-Haul behind it. But I just can't leave it there. I said, I would like to help you. He helped me, now I help you. That's called networking. We build a net that actually works. Y'all with me? So, what I'm saying is, develop this relate. Number one, develop this relationship, this network, really strong. That's your responsibility. Number two, you want to develop a personal and a professional network. Here's my definition: a network is the ability to build lasting, win-win relationships, to connect and across pollinate. In a few minutes, I'm going to run to the lobby just because I want to get your cards and I want to meet you and I want to get to know you. But more than that, I want you to cross-pollinate. 
I want the restaurant owner who needs a good general contractor. She's standing right there. She's an awesome woman. Could you stand up, please? The builder right there, the, 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 the mama that has the restaurant. Est-ce que tu peux te lever, s'il te plaît? She owns a restaurant. She needs a, a good general contractor. We want, we want her company, her restaurant. It's going to be Haitian food, Haitian food? Haitian. Oh, I want to go to your restaurant. But she needs a good general contractor. How about a Christian who can actually treat her fairly? Still make money, but it's got to be a win-win, right? So this concept of networking is the ability to build lasting win-win relationships to connect and cross-pollinate. In November, I'm going to Israel, and I think we've got about eight or nine spots left. Um, it's going to be an amazing trip. And, and I'm bringing my grandson, Luke. He's 12 years old. He wanted to go to Israel, and Papa's going to bring him. For me, isn't that cool? For me, that's money in the bank. I'm sowing into my grandson. I'm adding value. And he's always wanted to go to France and do ministry. And so I, I'm trying to work it out with Greg to see if I can go to France and, and go to a little ministry with my little grandson next to me who's 12, who uh, I, I know he's going to be super successful. His vision is to become a billionaire. Now, I'm not kidding. Now, now here I want to I free you up. It's not wrong to prosper. Does anybody want to be a billionaire here? Does anybody want to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to help other people? You got to have time, energy, and money to help other people. So it's not a dirt. I didn't say, oh, you, that's not spiritual. I didn't look at him and say, that's not spiritual. I can't believe you said you want to be a billionaire. I thought, good, Luke, good. You're going to be a billionaire. Come here, Papa will pray for you. Oh, yes, Jesus, make him a billionaire. He's going to take care of his Papa, and he's going to win a lot of people to Jesus. Ha! I only know two billionaires. I'd like to know more billionaires. I think it'd be fun. Number one, it all starts with that spiritual connection. Number two, here's my last point. Worship team, please come up. I really believe that not only does this network have to be great, because remember, I'm, I'm spending four weeks on this at least. This has to be strong, this network. So I can hear, I can get good reception. It's, it's, I'm serving him. I'm a follower, which means I serve him. I serve others. That's all part of that word. And then I, then I imitate other great Christians. I want to be more like Jerry. If I, if I could just be more like Jerry, yes, I, I want to imitate things he's doing. That's really good. But the second point, my last point is this, is that you have to develop a relationship with you. <laughs> I was in prayer when I was praying about today's message. It's, it's found in Matthew 19, 19. Now this might sound silly, or you might not uh, understand it at first glance. But verse 19, actually let's go to 18. Uh, which one? Let's go back a little bit more, 16 context. Now someone came up to him and said, Teacher, what good things must I do to gain eternal life? Verse 17, Jesus said, Why do you ask me about what is good? There's only one who's good. But if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. And he says, Which ones? <coughs> Jesus replied, Do not murder, do not commit adultery. Uh, do not commit adultery, uh, do not steal, do not give false testimony, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as your... What happens if I don't love myself? You can't love others. And if networking is about win-win, if I feel horrible, I'm always going to look to you to make me feel better. If I'm insecure, if I don't love myself... What I'll do is I'll go looking for someone to love me. You ever see people marry someone and just get abused all the time? Yeah. They don't really don't love themselves. They, they're, literally, they're putting up with the abuse. Why? Because they need to be loved. I want this to sink in for a second. Because it almost sounds like anti-Christian. Man, I thought that being a Christian means you hate yourself and all that. Mm, not in the Bible. Literally, that if you're going to change the world... You gotta really love yourself. You, you, you gotta. I, I know people. They look at themselves every day in the mirror and they go, "Oh man, I hate my bottom. I hate my hair. Oh, look at my nose. I'm gonna get a nose job." Uh, 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 <laughs> people spend their time hating themselves and literally saying it with their words. I just, I'm just so ugly, or I'm old, or I'm too young, or I'm too this, or I'm too that. And before you know it, they've polluted their own destiny. 
and they have nothing to give to anybody else. They walk in the room hoping somehow that they'll get affirmation, hoping somehow to be loved by someone else. Tell you what, the best place to start is right here. For God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. He really does. Spend some time in prayer. Get loved by the Father. He's a good Father. And then leave that room of yours, that home of yours, and start spreading that love everywhere you go. You start networking and feeding your networks. People are going to want to have you around them. They're going to want to be around you. They're going to want to hire you. They're going to want to hire your company. Well, it's, it's an old term in business. It's called customer relations. You treat your customer like you'd want to be treated. If you don't value yourself, you won't value anybody else. If you don't believe in yourself. I remember I used to sell photocopiers. When I was going, uh, when I met Denise, um, I got a job selling photocopiers. I must have been the worst photocopier salesman ever. Some of you know the story because I was selling a, I wasn't selling Canon or Nokia or Sanyo. I was selling the old Royal photocopiers. Remember Royal? I was selling Royal photocopiers. You've never heard of that, have you? That's a good point. And to tell you, Jerry, I didn't even believe in the product. Because that, that company was cheaper and faster and better. Canon was killing me everywhere I went. I go in there and I almost had the sale all of a sudden. Oh, well, Canon came yesterday and they, or Sanyo came in or so-and-so came in or, or Xerox came in and they, they, they offered a, twice the machine and half the money and get out of here. Ah! I didn't really believe in the product so I couldn't sell it. I finally went, I said, went to the boss and said, I'm so sorry, I got to go do something else. Because I'm, I'm a horrible salesman and I was. I have no problem admitting that. But when you believe in something, you can sell it. People say, Pastor, you're a great salesman because my product is perfection right here. He's perfect. I have no problem selling Jesus all day long and I'll give him away even. But I believe Christ in me is the hope of glory. I believe that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. When I saw Pasquale last week at the head of the table at the White House, I thought only God can take my Pasquale, my buddy, my ex-janitor who's become a world changer, at the head of the table in Washington, D.C. Only God can take a young guy at 20 years old, wanted to kill himself, and I'm sitting at a dinner with, with, with uh, Mo, uh, the guy from Gateway, and I'm sitting with, with uh, uh, Trump was, President Trump was right next to me. I, only God could take someone like me and put me in great places. Why? Because guess what? In the morning, God fill me so I have something to give to a broken world. I don't want to be needy. Yes, it should be win-win, but I want to start by giving it away, giving it away, giving it away. That's how you feed your network. You go to your mama and your daddy. Hey, don't expect them to be perfect. They're not. They're, they're faulty like all of us are. You go in there and add value even to your own family. You add value and value and value. Family gatherings will change. Why? Because you're not expecting anything from them. All you do is you're giving something away. You're giving love, affirmation. You're giving whatever. That's what a networker does. A networker can build a net wherever he goes. He can build it. I, I was watching the show the other day. It's alone. They put somebody alone and now they're in the Arctic. And the guy caught a fish but it fell off the line. So he went and built a net. Literally, out of something, a spit and a little bark, I think. And then he caught a big old fish with his net. I'm thinking, that's what we Christians have to learn. If we learn how to spend time building the nets, it'll be there for us and for others. Let's pray. Does this make sense, church? You're watching online. Let me know if this makes sense to you. Everything we're doing this year is to empower and equip you to change the world. Whether it's business or whether it's family or whether it's relationships, whatever it is, all we want to do is see you prosper and blessed and shalom. So we're going to do this before we go. If this word makes sense, I'd like you to stand. Would you stand in the presence of God? Would you stand in the presence of God? If this word makes sense. If this word makes sense. Now we didn't do this in the first service, but I believe, I feel in my heart and my mind that we're supposed to do in this service. If you want God to bless your career and bless your company, whether you're the employer or the employee, say, man, I'm really asking for the blessing of God. I am networking with heaven right now. I need God's blessing. The Bible says that Isaac prospered a hundredfold. He dug new, new wells and then his servants dug wells. 
I'm just speaking prophetically to you right now. If you say, man, I'm not afraid to ask God for help. I'm not afraid to network because guess what? My marketplace is ministry and my ministry is marketplace. If you'll say, I want prayer, I want you to come here right now. Say, man, I need prayer for my business, my restaurant. I need prayer for my, my schooling. I need prayer for my next step. Would you come up here right now? I want my leaders to come up and get some anointing oil. It'll give me time to go out there. We're going to sing a little bit and sing to Jesus. Our team will pray for people. I'm going to run the lobby because I want to shake your hand and I want you to network with each other. Get your cards ready. This is our first Sunday, our first network Sunday. I know a lot of people are traveling because school starts next week. But this is a great, you've come on a good day. And you come at a good time. All I care about is seeing you go to the next level. Yeah, I see a big word. I see the word promotion. I see the word advancement. I see the word increase. So as you're coming up, you're saying, would somebody pray for me? I want to my career, my company, my business, my, my next step. I want God to bless it. You are networking right here. If you've been far from God, would you come up and have our leaders pray? You say, man, I, I've been far from God. Would you pray for me? I want to get close to God. Come on up here as well. Our leaders will pray for you. Tell them what you want though. Go to the menu and say, I'd like to get right with God or I want my business. Tell them what you're praying for and they'll gladly, I want all our leaders to come. I want people to come right now. As the team starts to worship, I'm going to run out in the lobby and shake your hand because I want to get to know you and I want you to get to know each other. You ready? Lord, I love you. I can't wait to see what you're going to do in this new phase of ICLV on all our campuses and online too. Mwah! I love you. Come on, church, let's do it. Jesus!